Hey there, faithful fans. I'm Josh Mall, the voice for Swimming Pool Science, and this is the first in a series of videos on water chemistry, and this one's titled Pool Water Chemistry Number One, covering your bases and your acids and your alkalinity and your pH. Now, the first question you may be wondering is why are we covering pH and alkalinity first? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Everything revolves around it, and if it's out of balance, it can do the most damage both to you and your swimming pool. High pH clogs filters, makes surfaces rough and stained, and makes pipes look like my grandmother's arteries in extreme cases. Low pH eats everything that's not plastic. It'll dissolve your pool into itself. So it's an important one. So before we get started, let's take a minute and talk about how pH is measured. Thanks to Soren Sorensen back in 1909, we've got a way to quantify how acidic or how alkaline a substance is. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14, with 7 obviously being right down the middle. The scale is used to measure how acidic or how basic water is in our case. The scale is also logarithmic. That means that distilled water, which is a pH neutral at 7.0, is 10 times more acidic than seawater, which has a pH of 8.0. Now Mountain Dew is 10,000 times more acidic than distilled water with a pH at 3.0. Uh, liquid drain cleaner, for instance, very alkaline. It is 1 10 millionth the acidity of distilled water. So very basic. The scale is a measure of the positive hydrogen ions that are loose in the water, basically essentially free-floating protons. The more hydrogen ions you have in the water, the lower the pH, the more acidic. The more hydroxide ions we have, OH-, the more alkaline or basic the water is. So let's talk about what defines an acid. In swimming pools, there's generally two different types of acid we use. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and hydrochloric acid, HCl. Acid releases hydrogen ions and reacts quickly. You have strong acids like hydrochloric and sulfuric, and they react to completion. That means once they react with something, those forms are set unless something else comes in to react with them. Now, some of our weak acids, like H2O, water, and carbonic acid, they will react with bases and alkalines in the water, but that reaction tends to float both ways, where, for example, carbon dioxide dissolved, dissolved in water will bounce between carbonic acid, H2CO3, and carbon dioxide, CO2. Now we can get really deep into acids and bases in the reactions, get into things like Henry's Law, and talk about really the mechanics of it all, but we're trying to keep this simple. Known as Sodium carbonate, also known as soda ash, is the normal go-to for raising pH in swimming pools. It adds more hydroxide ions to the water. Now there's a few other factors that can play in to cause pH to raise on its own. For example, if you've got a salt chlorine generator, the mere act of separating the sodium from the chloride releases hydroxide ions, causing the pH to go up. When the water surface is stirred, such as having returns pointed upward, water features spilling into a pool, or a negative edge, that is going to cause the pH to rise due to an increased outgassing of carbon dioxide. Let's talk about alkalinity, also known as a buffer. These are the compounds that will react and neutralize acid. We typically want these to stay in the range of 80 to 100 parts per million. This is the ideal range, and that can sometimes vary depending on what part of the country or the world you're in, and other variables factored in on your water chemistry that we'll get into on a future video. It's really just a measurement of the water's resistance to pH change measured in parts per million. Alkalinity acts like shock absorbers in a car to absorb the bumps and spikes, the different things that will factor in to affect pH either up or down. Sodium bicarbonate is our typical acid buffer we go to in a swimming pool. Now there are other types out there, but this is what I like to use. Something to keep in mind is sodium bicarbonate will push the water's pH towards an 8.3. That means if the pH is higher than an 8.3, it's actually going to drive that down to the 8.3. When acid is added to the water, it reacts with the sodium bicarbonate to form carbonic acid and table salt. Now some of this carbonic acid will gas off in the form of CO2. So let's do a little experiment demonstrating what happens when you mix hydrochloric acid with sodium bicarbonate. So let's take a second and do an experiment showing the results of transferring hydrogen ions over to hydroxide. I've got some bicarb right here, I've got some acid here, and we're going to combine them to see what they do. Here we go. Chewing gum. That gum. 
So as you can see, it's a really exciting and violent reaction when you're transferring hydrogen from acid over to hydroxide ions forming a salt and a water as well as carbon dioxide gas. So what's the difference between sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate? It sounds to me like they both do the exact same thing. Well, let's get into that. Soda ash, or sodium carbonate, slightly raises alkalinity, but more effectively raises pH. While alkalinity, sodium bicarbonate, reacts with hydrogen ions in the water, so they won't react with plasters, metals, and other things in the pool. It slightly raises pH, but more effectively raises the alkalinity of the water. So let's talk about some of the other things that pH affects in the water. Chlorine, and that's a big one. The lower the pH, the more effective and aggressive chlorine is at sanitizing and oxidizing organic compounds. At a pH of 7.4, chlorine is 50% effective. At an 8.0, it's only 21% effective. All the way down at 7, it is over 70% effective. And that's why when we're shocking a pool, we always add a little bit of acid to drive that pH down so that chlorine can work just a little bit harder. So why not just run the pH down at a 7.0 and use less chlorine? Well, that's simple. Swimmer comfort. The pH of the human body, blood, mucous membrane, and eyes sits around a 7.4. So when you jump into a pool and you're swimming around underwater and your eyes burn, it's not because of the chlorine. It's because the pH is significantly higher or significantly lower than a 7.4. So anything out of the 7.2 or 7.6 range can put swimmers in the discomfort zone. A spa or hot tub pH should be run just a little bit higher, maybe a little bit more towards a 7.6 to 7.8 range. That's because when bathers enter the hot tub, the pH tends to fall down towards that pH neutral, and that gives us a little bit more wiggle room so we're not damaging critical components like heater cores. Now we can't forget about dosing and safety. You never want to add more than a half a gallon of acid at a time to an average size swimming pool. Pour low at a return or right before brushing never on a step or a bench as acid is heavier than water and will damage the pool surface. You can pre-dilute by pouring acid into a bucket partially pre-filled with water. Never pour water into acid. You can also wear a mask as a further precaution against fumes. Pour low down the side of the container to prevent splash out and stand upwind. Be careful not to spill or splash on the deck or concrete. Be careful about tripping on acid as it can lead to hallucinations if you hit your head. Soda ash and bicarb are less corrosive, but can still be diluted in a bucket of water, which is a great idea for vinyl pools. If you're going to apply directly to the pool, broadcast low and stay upwind. So how much do you put in? Well, that depends on your pool's capacity, and we've got a video for that you can watch right up here. You also need to know how to test water properly, and we also have a video for that right up here. So what does it boil down to? Well pH and alkalinity are the starting points for proper pool chemistry due to their direct effects on the pool itself, chlorine, and swimmer comfort. In prepping and fact checking for this video, we found a great resource in the book titled Swimming Pool Basics for the Servicing Professionals by Richard Franklin. It can be found at the link in the description along with sodium carbonate, pH up, and sodium bicarbonate, alkalinity. For this video, we're running a little contest for those of you that have stuck it out with us to the end. You might have noticed my socks. If you can name the significance of the design, and here's a hint, it has nothing to do with Michael Jordan or the Chicago Bulls, give us a follow on Instagram and send us a message on our Instagram page, at Swimming Pool Science. Answers are due by July 22nd, 2019 to be eligible, and we'll draw two winners from the right answers. We'll send one person an SPS t-shirt and a pair of these socks, and we'll send the runner-up an SPS t-shirt. I'm Josh Mall, the voice for Swimming Pool Science. Don't forget to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Wheeler, are you bleeding at all? Like are Henry's okay? Law and things like that that govern the rules. Shh. Be quiet, please. Your mouse is not out of the house. Okay. All right.